Hey y'all, I'm Pam with 44 Marketplace. And if today's your first visit to my channel, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm glad you're here. Please take a minute to subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. And keep in mind, I try to put a material list in the comments below each one of the videos. If I miss something, please let me know. Okay, let's get started. Hey y'all, it is nine o'clock on Saturday night. What else would I be doing but painting in my booth? So I'm gonna bring you guys back in here and bring you up to date of where we are. Okay, as you can see, we have lots and lots and lots of light um, because we are in my paint booth. And last night we demoed three, four different sprayers. Um, we did demo, what? four different sprayers so you guys got an idea of what it's like and everything so just to refresh if you have questions I'm happy to go back over those sprayers um, my air hose uh, my vent in my Graco was stopped I mean in my uh, Arlex was stopped up that's why it wasn't doing the way that it wanted to so tonight we're actually going to be spraying some paint I'm sorry I didn't get the um, viscosity test done today crazy day computer problems at the store so um, by popular vote Annabelle and blue is the color of our new vanity and that will help because the top is black granite and um, we want I'm going to highlight the details with some black wax glaze some combination thereof so that's where we are okay so I wanted to show you guys exactly how I prep my paint to go into my sprayer. As I showed you, mine is a Graco, and I did put the link up last night. Um, so if you wanna see uh, the Graco, I think it's about $1,400 on Amazon, but I did put the link up. Hey, Susie Bragg. Um, here is my little insert. This is my cup. I have already diluted my paint, but I want you guys to see what it looks like. There it is. Um, as I told you, I stir my paint. I don't shake my paint because it creates bubbles. In fact, if you stir too vigorously, you can create bubbles in your paint. So I am, I've already got this done. We're gonna pour it through so that it is screened before it goes in there. You want to strain your paint every single solitary time. If there's paint in one of these cups and you're in my shop, you know that it's already diluted and it is ready to be sprayed, okay? All right, um, allow your paint time to drain through. It doesn't take but a couple of minutes and I'm the most impatient person in the world. So if I can wait, you can wait, just be patient. But I'm gonna show you, this is exactly what I do every time when I'm getting ready to spray. And I'm gonna show you this piece, explain what we're gonna do. I'm gonna tilt the camera down. There'll be some noise while we spray this piece, but we're gonna do a couple things before we get to that point. All right, so we've pretty much gone through. And I'm gonna sit these out here so they won't be in here in the booth. All right, with my sprayer, I have this that goes on and you make sure it's seated correctly and then this little collar goes on and tightens everything up seals everything down tight all right once you've got that on then you get the actual nozzle which I have hanging in my booth in here and on it goes I'm gonna sit it up here so you can see this screws on and I, after I get it screwed on I'll show you what I'm doing As you can see, it screws on the neck there, and then I have a hose that connects here, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna tighten this up nice and tight. The hose goes through a holder right there, and it goes onto the connection. This is what pressurizes my cup so that it takes the paint out, and this one allows me to spray upside down, sideways, whatever direction, because it does it by pressure. I'm gonna move my little seat here. All right. So as you can see, we have a vanity here. I'm gonna tilt you down and you'll just hear me talking. You don't need to see me right now. All right, as you can see, we have a vanity here. It has doors that open, it has exposed hinges, 
But as you can see, on this side, the hinges have already been painted with another kind of paint. And these were painted with the original paint. So because of that, I'm gonna spray it in place. I haven't decided yet because I don't know what these original hinges look like. I haven't decided yet. Typically, I don't paint my hinges, but with the original finish being on these, they may not be anything neat underneath. So at this point, we're gonna spray it in place. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna turn it up while I chit chat a minute. When you're spraying a piece, um, a lot of times you'll see me spray with the doors in or the doors on or something like that because I wanna get an even finish. That way I can spray it all intact. Otherwise, what you have to do is you have to tape all of that off so that you don't get paint on the inside of your piece if you're not trying to paint the inside of your piece. This is just gonna be the vanity in the bathroom at my store. So I can spray it with the do doors on or off because this color's beautiful and it would be great on the inside. But to speed up the process for you guys tonight, I'm gonna spray it with the doors intact but just know when I get this sprayed, I'll have to go back in and I'll have to do all of the edges with a brush. If I opt to spray it in place, I'll have to do all of the edges with a brush. So that's what I wanna make sure you guys know. If you spray it intact like I'm going to do tonight, then you still will have to go and you will have to spray with the doors. You'll have to go back around and get all of this off and do it with a brush. And as you can see, the inside of this is has no great shakes, but it will be great in there. And I may even decide after I get off tonight to spray the inside, I don't know. But you bet you will have to go in and get all of these inside edges with a brush afterwards. Now, some people would rather spray it all at pieces. Take all the doors off and spray it in pieces. But tonight, for expediency, we are going to spray it intact. We are spraying it with Antebellum Blue by Dixie Belle, and um, it will be some noise, but it's gonna be a quick spray. This is just a bathroom vanity, so it'll be a quick spray. Let me grab my mask, which I've had on most all of the day. <laughs> and there'll be some noise.
like that. Our bathroom vanity is painted with a coat of paint. So, all right, now you guys get to see kind of um, what's going on. Um, that is how it is when, um, when you're spraying a vanity. Uh, I've already taped and draped this piece and that kind of thing. And you can see, uh, I can put you up close so you guys can see. It is painted nice and smooth and quickly. And if you guys haven't tried spraying, I highly recommend it, especially for your clear coats. Sorry I look so sweaty. I look terrible up close, but... Sorry, I have been on my feet spraying all day. So, um, when you are spraying, you want to make sure and wear protection. Uh, I don't care what kind of filter you get. I use a 3M. These are interchangeable so that I can reuse it. Some of the masks are disposable. This one is great. You can see I wear this thing all the time. I've had it on the biggest part of the day today. Thus my shiny face. Um, it's kind of warm in here. And um, this will dry in no time. In fact, I'll probably put a fan on it after we get off. And it really, really dries quickly. So I, as you can see, I had somebody ask me if it made a difference that half of it had white on it and half of it was the natural color. As you can see for yourself, it made no difference whatsoever. Dixie Bell has that great a coverage. I mean, there's, it's unparalleled in the industry. I haven't found anything that covers quite like Dixie Bell does. So if you haven't tried it, this shows you how easy it is. Now again, like I said before, I will have to take these doors open and I'll have to take my brush and I'll have to run around the edges to finish that up. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the hinges yet because I'm really not a painted hinge girl. I just don't care for it that much. Um, so it remains to be seen about that. But I will be putting a second coat on here because tomorrow night we're still spraying. Tomorrow night I want you guys to see how quickly and easily the top coat goes on over this. And if I can get it dry, we may try to do some highlighting. I don't think it'll dry in time tomorrow night, but we can highlight it and everything because I clear coat before I wax or glaze. Now that's not everybody's thing, but I clear coat before I wax or glaze. So if you haven't um, done that before, we will be spraying a clear coat tomorrow night and talking about a few other things to do with spraying. Also, uh, Monday night we may do the highlighting and stuff because I'm going to get to use my new Prima brush, which I love, that I showed you guys at the beginning of the week. So if you haven't tried that, it's Amaze Falls. But as you can see, this thing just sprayed beautifully. It didn't matter that it was kind of yucky to begin with, that it was two different colors and whatever. Now it did have some faux crackle on it that I sanded through in a couple of places because not a giant fan of the crackle, um, the faux crackle at least. So I hope that it um, comes off the way that I want it to because if it doesn't, I'll just make it look even more crackled. So, um, if you guys haven't tried it, I want you guys to try it. Always remember tape and drape because the reason my spray went so well so easily is because I didn't have to worry about being careful of this top. I taped and draped it, so I know that there's no overspray going to happen on it. If you notice, I stayed fairly close to my piece. The closer I stay to my piece, the less overspray there is to spread over whatever is going on around me. And there's almost no overspray even underneath it. Also, keep your wrist straight when you're spraying. When you're spraying, you have to keep your wrist straight. If you break your wrist, then your sprayer is farther away, close, farther away. So always keep your wrist straight when you're spraying. Another thing to remember is don't let your sprayer stop. If you're pressing on the trigger, you're allowing fluid through, so don't let your sprayer stop. Keep that sprayer moving. Keep it moving or let off the trigger. Almost every one of the sprayers, the harder you press on the trigger, the more fluid comes out. So be mindful of that. If you don't want as much fluid coming out, if you're not gonna keep that sprayer moving quickly, then let off a little bit on the trigger so you don't have quite so much fluid coming out. Keep that sprayer moving and it'll go beautifully. Also, 
remember, go past the edges. Don't stop and start at the edges because if you do, you're going to have pulling on all of your edges. So if you'll notice, I went down and then back up. I went down past the bottom edge and then back up because if you don't do it, then you're going to have pulling if you try to stop at those edges. That is always never a good thing. And if you let your paint pool, sometimes you'll get crackle. And the reason you get crackle is because it starts drying underneath before it dries on top. And that's what causes the crackle. So if you notice that, then that's probably what it is. And if you're spraying something like a tabletop and you let it pool and you get a little crackle, take a 320 grain, sand through the little crackled part, paint back over it and your aces. Um, the sprayer that I'm using is a Graco Finish Pro 9.5 HVLP. I'll link it again in the comments. I linked the Amazon link yesterday so that you guys can see it because it does run about $1,400. Uh, if you're doing a big job or you've decided that this is going to be your business, I highly recommend this one because it aerates the paint unlike anything I've ever seen. It has the quick disconnect. Um, I have two guns, so right now I have clear coat because I'm clear coating some cabinets. I have clear coat and Annabelle and Blue in two different ones. And I keep mine hanging up in my booth so that they have quick access with this little hook. So it's really, really amazing. It's a Graco Finish Pro 9.5 HVLP. Now they do have some that are semi-pro that are less expensive. They're down in the $700 range. And I'm gonna tell you, I have several friends now that have Graco's and they have varying degrees of them. And nobody has been unhappy with the Graco that they bought. So, um, if you're looking for a sprayer, you know that I used my Earl X 5500 spray station forever. I mean, forever, four years. And it never missed a beat. Of course, last night it acted like an idiot and was shy because I was online. But it sprayed like a champ today when nobody's watching. But my Graco, um, it's not even a comparison because the Graco is unbelievable. Um, so if you guys are looking for a sprayer, I'm happy to answer any questions. Let me know what your budget is and I'll tell you my opinion. All it is is my opinion. I did get a few messages uh, last night that said um, that they dilute their paint with Floetrol. I think that's great. I choose not to dilute it with Floetrol because chalk mineral paint is already so thick that diluting it with Floetrol, it really just didn't give me the consistency I was looking for when I sprayed. And I gotta tell you, I'm really, really happy with the consistency I get with purified water. I don't use my water because where I live, there's hard water and hard water is not good for your sprayer. And if you close that mess up, it smells like sewer when you open it. So I'm just going on the record and tell you, use bottled water because if you don't, you may be sad because it stinks like poopy. So you don't want that. Um, I will let you guys see what this looks like tomorrow. Like I say, we'll probably top coat it tomorrow. That way you guys can go with me through the entire process. You guys see what a great lines this has. And a lot of times people, People that would have seen this would have thought, uh, you know, somebody's already got a bunch of paint on it. So what? So what? It's going to be fabulous when we're done. I'm so glad you guys picked this color. I was actually leaning toward a metallic. Popular Vote said this, so this is what we've got. And we're going to do some beautiful glazing and stuff. I'm still not saying we're not going to throw a little bit of metallic in the top coat or something. The final top coat, because I really wanted a shimmery, shiny kind of thing. So... I let you pick the color and I am going to use black to highlight and low light, but the top coat may have a little bit of moonshine something, maybe a little bit of silver bullet or a little something because I've got two tone hardware. I've got chrome and polished brass. So it needs some kind of shimmer and shine, right? So the top coat may be a mixture of gator hide and silver bullet. I'm just saying, you know? Um, so I really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you have any questions about spraying, I am happy to answer it. I would not pretend to be an expert. All I can tell you is that I spray almost seven days a week. Um, I work seven days a week and typically, if you're looking for me, you can find me in my spray booth because it's my happy place. I love to be here. 
and um, I'm actually in the process of building a booth at my house so I can spray even more and not be away from home. So I, uh, again, Graco sprayers, I highly recommend them. Um, I, I can't find a negative about them. They, this one, the Finish Pro, it actually pauses. If I don't use it for a while, like I'm caulking the cracks in these cabinets and stuff, it puts itself on quiet time. And then as soon as I press the trigger, boom, it wakes back up and we're ready to spray again. So all I can tell you is if you decide to do this as a business, because I can see that I've got lots of my friends watching who are actually retailers, if you're looking for this as a business, I, I recommend the Graco. I know it's an investment. I absolutely know it's an investment, but it is an investment in your business. If you're going to do your kitchen cabinets or something like that, I would at least spend the 300 bucks for the Erlex because I'm telling you the difference is night and day. Um, I have uh, several of the sprayers. I demonstrated a couple of the others last night and it really makes a big difference. Even, I don't care what kind of sprayer you're using, always protect your breathing. Always, always, always wear a mask. If you have sensitive skin, be sure and wear gloves. Uh, most people wear glasses and typically I wear my glasses. I don't wear safety glasses. I just wear my glasses. Um, and another thing is make sure you're ventilating where you are. I have a ventilation system in here. Actually, it's acting like a freak today too, but um, I have a ventilation system in here that keeps the air changing over. So not only am I wearing my ventilator on my face, I actually have a fan system that runs in here to change over the air to make sure that the air that it's putting out into my warehouse, I, it has a filter on it to make sure the air is cleaned before it gets back out. So if you have questions about setting up a paint booth, I actually have a YouTube video on how to do it on the cheap using a pop-up tent. Uh, a few, about a month and a half ago, I even did, I even shared a link from Brad Steele's where you could get a tent with sides, which was a great deal. Um, I think a bunch of you took advantage of that. But if you don't have questions, then I am going to throw a fan on this and get it dry so that I can finish spraying my cabinet doors because I got a kitchen to finish next week and it's a big one. Remember the pictures? So, um... I'm going to let you guys go. It's Saturday night, and I know everybody's partying hard, and I will see you tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. See ya!